and i see and i see some familiar faces i think they were there even during the last session and uh, with due excuse that some of my slides may be a repetition because the crowd will be new and this is going to be a very long session i don't know how academic staff college and nidm designed this uh, particular uh, topic and time uh, is my screen visible sir yes sir yes sir okay <clears throat> now i am very happy that we have participants from all walks of life from economics to sociology to microbiology to other science streams in fact i designed this topic yesterday in fact i was editing this uh, uh, presentation till uh, maybe uh, 1 am uh, midnight because i wanted to be more meaningful and one request to the participants if you are not sitting just uh, 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 remove your videos sir uh. Yes, sir. I request. I request partners to. This is an instruction. Uh, yes, sir. Okay, teacher. sir. I'm a very tough teacher. It, this is not a request. It is an instruction. If you are yes. not sitting, ah. just uh, um, remove your video from the screen. Please mute the speak. I mean, uh, video. If you are moving from one place to another place, if you are sitting in one place, you please keep. Yeah, that's on video. Okay, that's because right. I will be seeing some active bright yes, faces. Yes. Do not, uh, not disturb the research process. Yes. <laughs> Priya Darshini, madam, please uh, mute, mute video. Okay. Just uh, they are busy with something else. Because it, it will disturb the research person while giving the lecture. Okay. Yeah, please. correct, correct. That's it. Please mute Now, it. No problem. Let us start with the very title itself. Post COVID, uh, maybe I argued with Dr. Swami sir. that uh, post covid may not suit well because will there be a post covid era i don't think i don't think we will have a post covid era why i will tell you later looking at the past two years of experience we have seen many waves it may be the fourth wave if you look at the global map i will try to project some in the end it is about fifth or sixth wave in us eighth wave in many countries in europe particularly uk we are seeing third wave in india like many more waves are going to come some experts and some governments of some nations have already accepted that covid has become endemic in the sense the virus is going to be there in the society for many more years or decades to come just like dengue habitual presence of the disease producing agent in the society is called endemic when the opportunity for spread arises at that point of time it will become an epidemic epidemic is what an increase in number which is clearly in expectation of the usual uh, thing like for example if you are anticipating about 100 dengue cases in mysore city if we get more than 100 we use the word epidemic but now and then seeing about five cases 10 cases now and then the, we use the word endemic so we are going to live with this covid virus forever corona virus responsible for a simple common cold maybe as a microbiology expert i have been teaching students on this virus for not less than about 3 decades we never took it seriously but the mutations in this corona virus were responsible for sars and mers in the past they were isolated to a small geographical area that did not cause much havoc but now another mutation or a genetically engineered virus we don't know uh, this became very infective causing very severe disease became pandemic that is occurrence of a disease globally and the spread was also too much so the degree and severity of the newer covid infections may vary it may be for better or it may be for worse each time when the new strain of virus from alpha to beta to delta to gamma and delta plus and now the omicron it is changing but even nobody can speculate whether the new strain will be more infective more serious or 
some way other. When Omicron was uh, entering into the field, uh, people thought it is definitely infective and it is going to be more serious. If you try to remember what the media is publishing, but on the contrary, Omicron was very, very infectious, but very much less severe compared to what we saw with Delta virus. Now, for the title, post-COVID scenario, look at the uh, contradictory point that was projected by none other than Dr. Antonio Fauci, one of the best infectious diseases expert this world has ever seen. If some of you have not seen his presentations, go to National Geographic documentary on Dr. Fauci, how from the early 80s of this HIV um, entering into the human race, till now, how actively he has uh, been advocating preventive measures, treatment measures, newer modalities of diagnosis, and many a times he has uh, burnt his hand uh, uh, facing the government's ire and even public ire. Uh, you can see the um, placards which were there uh, during the HIV pandemic, kill Fauci, fire Fauci, uh, but he never got deterred. He is an unbelievable person. That's what I said in the beginning because of this uh, a, a cosmopolitan crowd, what we are seeing today, this is what Dr. Fauci did. He took uh, about 50 public people, public faces uh, to a scientific uh, meeting. Uh, many scientists and doctors opposed. You have brought down the sanctity of the scientific forum line. But he never got uh, deterred by those statements. He said, whatever may be the thing, if you want public acceptance, people should know what we are doing. Because the real meaning uh, will be there only when the public accept uh, whatever the science or the medical fraternity is telling. If there is no acceptance from the public, me being a very great doctor will be meaningless. That's it. So looking at this, world is still in the first stage of pandemic. That's what is says. Still, even today, this is not very old. This is not even one month old, this statement. And I believe him not, to be, not because I am just his fan, because I am also a person of science. That's it. So this pandemic, if you look at some of the diseases, what we saw in the past, like smallpox, polio, plague, dengue, yellow fever, and many bacterial infections like cholera, and now COVID, including rabies. If time permits, I will tell you why I have picked up these diseases? Smallpox, maybe the science was not that well developed at that point of time. It was there for centuries. Maybe Edward Jenner's innovation of this vaccine, maybe that was the reason for the word vaccine. Vekka, meaning cow. I think I was telling about this in my last lecture. Vekka, the virus responsible for Cowpox was vaccinia virus. The virus responsible for smallpox was variola major virus. There was some antigenic similarity between the two viruses and the vaccinia virus, which did not cause a big disease in man, was used as the vaccine material. It prevented variola major virus from producing a deadly smallpox in those people, in the in vaccinated group of people. That is history now. You can go through this. There are some movies on this. Th that, that is history. Maybe that was the beginning of this vaccination thing. And now uh, we have seen many effective vaccines. The nature may be different, uh, which are used in the prevention of many, many deadly diseases. We are all sitting here today, uh, healthy, because of this vaccination itself, because we are always swimming in a pool of pathogens. So taking such diseases into consideration, he has categorized stages of this any pandemic, not just COVID. 
uh, first the stage of pandemic, that is small ups and downs, still the virus is moving around. There are many, many uninfected people yet who are virgin, who if they have not been vaccinated, they're always at the threat of catching new infection. How long this will continue, we don't know yet. Next is deceleration. Maybe because of herd immunity, previous experience with the wild virus, previous experience with the vaccine virus, now the number will start coming down and down and down. Then we will reach a stage of control. Whenever something emerges, we will be able to um, institute some preventive measures to bring it under control. Then comes elimination. Now, the best example I can give, the best disease example I can give is polio. We are almost on the verge of eliminating poliomyelitis virus from the globe. But we have not yet declared that it has been eradicated. We still continue with oral polio vaccine. And in some countries, they killed a Salk polio vaccine, like in UK and some European nations. India is practicing oral polio vaccine. And now and then, we conduct pulse polio program to cover whoever have been missed the primary vaccination program. And maybe after a few more years, we will be certainly we will be declaring that even polio myelitis virus has been eradicated from the globe. In the history, we have declared it only for smallpox. To what extent we are confident as, trust me, we are not discussing smallpox virus for medical students in medical schools at all. We have removed the chapter. We just refer it as some history, a legendary remark on, on this thing. But I always insist that it should be there because how serious the disease was, how systematic WHO and every nation, gov nation's government and every individual involved in smallpox vaccination program, it, that is an inspiring story which can be mimicked for implementing any public, this thing, um, um, public health measure. Uh, why I repeatedly say that I'm very happy because of the um, a, a composite nature of the uh, today's expert crowd is, I want you people to be ambassadors for this. It is not just one hour talk. Please keep a paper and a pencil with you. Note down some points, either clarify with me in the end or you just go search the net for some details, obtain some command. Even for the economist, you know, you, you need a lot of, we need a lot of inputs from you people. How to go about this thing? I am a medical expert. If you ask me what are the preventive measures for uh, uh, COVID, I can give you one hour lecture. But if you ask me if there is a lockdown, if there is an economic imbalance at a family level or at the nation level, I am not an expert. I don't know. I will just ask an entire shutdown is a necessity. But if somebody says, how can you tell that uh, uh, if everybody shut down, how will poor people leave who live on daily wages? I don't know. That is why there is an active role for every responsible individual on this planet. Uh, um, uh, because I have seen this disease. That's what Dr. Swami was trying to tell. I have seen this disease as a doctor and as a patient and even as a parent of two doctor children. Now, the amount of stress we had during the mid-2020, I don't wish that even to a deadliest enemy of mine. Um, that is one thing. Uh, because we were always with patients. We lost many patients. We lost some of our colleagues. When I got infected in 2020 October, there was no vaccine. There was no effective drug. Believe me, favipiravir was prescribed to all four of us in the family. Now, they, they say favipiravir is a waste. Now, maybe we spent about 12,000 rupees on favipiravir at that point of time for all four of us. So, it, it is useless now. So, you can imagine the state of situation. Now, why I am insisting is only one point. Compare this with the helmet rule. This, the impositions, what the government will try to advocate on the public, compare it with helmet rule. This is a airborne disease. 
which will spread to thousands of people every day. So have some trust in the government and its advisory. Government is not interested in getting a bad name by disturbing the societal the fabric, the economic fabric. After due consideration, consultation with experts, then only they arrive at implementing this emergency situations, emergency-like situations. Only thing is we have to gear up for that. You discuss with me, you arrive at a conclusion. Once you are convinced with what I am telling, don't hesitate to convince others. This is my earnest request. These three slides I have been repeatedly showing. And I am even today I am surprised why TV media is uh, uh, not projecting this in a big way. This is not new. This is what uh, Dr. Joshua Lederberg had said in 1958 when he got the Nobel. Single biggest threat to man, man's continued dominance on the planet is the virus. Every letter is so meaningful. See, he, he was not, not uh, Nostradamus to predict some good or bad things to the world. He knew the nature of humans and the nature of virus. How these viruses mutate, acquire some newer properties to infect newer species, acquire mutations to become more severe in their disease producing nature. Look at this. See, you may need 100 rupees to go to Bangalore and come back. If you keep 1000 rupees with you, I don't think it is a waste. You are not going to throw the remaining 900 elsewhere. Similarly, by being more careful about the disease, we are not wasting anything. It, it, it is as simple as this. Only thing is, we should be humble. We should have some humility in accepting this. That is why I insist, please educate your children. I mean your students to be very polite, understand what is what, it is not like the era of when we were students in 70s and 80s. The trend has changed. Now, first thing is we have to be very tough. At the same time, we have to teach them like we are their friends and guides. We have to be very tough. Um, otherwise, you see, during our days, you know, I need not elaborate. The things were different. Now you have to be tough. Uh, my professors used to tell, I believe in tough teaching and training and a cool exam. But the present day is reverse. No tough teaching, no tough training, but a very tough exam. The, I don't think that, that will serve the purpose. Look at this. He himself had said, we live in an evolutionary competition with microbes, bacteria and viruses. Why bacteria? Most of these antibiotics, you know, when penicillin was discovered by Alexander Fleming, Everybody thought it is a Brahmastra. Any infection, we have penicillin like. Misuse of many, many antibiotics has made the bacteria resistant to most of the available antibiotics these days. This is the reason why I request you people not to look at today's lecture as a purely COVID related lecture. This is related to health science from a social perspective. That's it. Now, there is no guarantee that we will be the survivors. What does it mean? Instead of we killing the bacteria and viruses and surviving, it may be the other way around. Bacteria and virus may kill us and they may survive for the future. That's it. Look at this. The microbes are challenging us in ways we would not have imagined 10 years ago and for which we were not prepared. This is not a new slide. Maybe this slide itself is 10 year old. So what is quoting is 20 year old story. And since then, what have we learned? Nothing. People go to pharmacy. If they have money, they can get even poison in the pharmacy. For any antibiotic, there is a prescribed dose and duration, both. People forget about the dose, forget about the duration. Once they become symptomatically better, they discontinue the treatment. They would have spent money and brought it home, but they will not continue with the antibiotic. This is a very bad trend. 
I have seen this even among doctors. Better don't start an antibiotic, but if you start an antibiotic, it must be full dose and full course. This is what I strictly insist and I humbly request. That is it. Otherwise, one day we will be succumbing to simple sore throat. This is my fear. TB. TB, from where we have come where? You should be socially aware because in FM radio, every day, 10 times this TB control program um, related news will be coming. There was a day during which if people catch TB, they used to come to the doctor. We used to examine, arrive at a diagnosis and treat them. Then came, we went to the patient. We gave free treatment. That was the second stage. People didn't take it properly. Then came DOTS, D-O-T-S, Direct Observational Therapy, short course. We went to patient, opened the tablets, give it, gave it to his hand and asked him to take it in front of our eyes. Direct Observational Therapy, failed. Now, again, we are calling back them. In addition to free diagnosis and free treatment, we are offering 500 rupees to the patient for the duration of the therapy, which may be six months to two years. Even to the doctor, as an incentive, the government is offering about 500 or 1,000 rupees as a one-time incentive for reporting it, monitoring it, like that. 1,000 rupees may not be a big thing to a doctor, but it is just a gesture from the government how serious the matter is. Why, why did we enter into these difficult phases? It is because misuse of anti-tubercular medicines led to the development of multiple drug-resistant TB. There is one term called total drug-resistant TB. In rude colloquial language, do you know what I say? Once the patient is diagnosed with total drug-resistant TB, write the death certificate, keep it, and the patient dies, Fill up the date and give it to him. Give it to the family. Why am I so rude? It is because the name itself says it is totally drug resistant. There is no treatment whatsoever. So we should not enter into that stage. So please look at it. I, As a doctor, I need some sociology. Okay, I need some philosophy. I need economics. At the same time, I need science. I may be a good doctor. If I don't know how to speak to the uh, patient empathy, filled with empathy, who will come to me? What is the use of my knowledge if I have no uh, culture of speaking to the patient well? If I don't have a good listening skill, that's it. Now, in today's talk, I will briefly run through this. It may be a repetition for some of you people. Please excuse me for that. I will try to rush through. In the end, if some of you want me to elaborate, I will come back to this. All of us have experienced these things. Seriousness of the disease, waves in different countries. Some of you, please mute your uh, um, uh, phones or computers. Disease and death burden in different, different countries. We will learn something about the virus, the disease, and the immunity. The diagnosis, that is the testing protocols. Some of the people, travelers, are put into a lot of inconvenience because of this testing protocol differences in various countries. Uh, when I come to that particular reading, I will try to elaborate. Preventive steps, which is very important, the general preventive steps, vaccines and vaccination status in various countries, including India, individual and public responsibility in prevention, which goes a very long way, societal response till now, and what is needed in future. If not Corona, something else will be there in future. Uh, I was telling one of my elderly uh, friend, philosopher, guide, and my patient, my esteemed patient, who is 88 years. Sir, I had not seen this in my 56 years of my life. Then he said, I had not seen such a thing in 88 years. What will you see in 55 years? This is what he said. So one day, even our children, our students will be faced with some other problem, if not COVID. So finally, we will have some small summary discussion and we will take up questions. 
Now, the seriousness of the disease and waves in different countries. This is a ever-changing scenario, isn't it? This is ever-changing. Look at this. Sorry, I had kept it. Now maybe because of this thing, I um, most of you might have seen the worldometer statistics, worldometer statistics of this COVID, isn't it? So every day they update, and uh, they will be showing the graphs. The only thing is we should learn how to interpret it. That's it. I wish I had taken some screenshots of that. I thought I will be directly projecting it from uh, the screen. That is why this delay. These waves, you know, the word wave doesn't have any specific meaning. If you look at the whole, whole world scenario, look at this. Look at this. This is daily new cases, this thing, in the entire world. What I want you to appreciate in this particular scene is during the first three or four waves, we had not even touched about 10 lakh cases per day. But during the present wave, which started in January, we have touched 39 lakh cases per day in the world, which is almost four times what we were, what we had seen in the past. Like, Sorry, my system is very slow. I don't know because I did not switch it off. Okay, that's it. Now, each wave in the past was due to a different strain. Whether it is the fifth wave in US, eighth wave in UK, third wave in India, the season is the same. It is this January, February of 2022. It is all caused mostly by the new Omicron variant, which is highly infectious, but less severe. We don't know. It may be mutating to some other strain and become less severe and get extinct or the other way around. It may become more serious also. So uh, I had a live TV interview about two weeks ago. I think some of you might have seen because I received one or two phone calls from the participants of my earlier programs. The TV anchor asked me, uh, public have a doubt whether this was deliberately made. There is no COVID at all. Uh, it is just a uh, who and cry created by some vested interest. I was really annoyed by the question. At that point of time, the world had seen 32 crore cases, 55 lakh deaths. Today, I don't know whether some of you observed it, we have seen 41 crore cases and 58 lakh deaths. Is it humanly possible for any individual or a country to falsify the statistics to this extent? Nobody will believe. We are living in an evidence-based era. Whatever I say, you have the right to question me. Sir, give me the reference. For whatever you are telling, give me the reference. Like, nobody can do this. The whole world will not go into a shutdown. That is why we don't believe what, what China is projecting. It was stopped. Till 75,000 cases, it was stopped. Now it is in 100th place. Even a small country with about 10 lakh population has got more number of cases compared to the country with the highest population of 141 crore China. 
the number of cases they had they are projecting is too less i don't know if they have really done it let them tell the world how they were able to contain the disease whether they had the vaccine in hand before uh, they started spreading the virus to other countries so this is about the current scenario coming to the virus this is one picture what all of you have seen this is just like parts of the body what children will be um, learning in the uh, elementary school uh, head ear eye nose hand leg and all that what i want you to observe is various parts like the spike protein the nucleocapsid the membrane protein do you know why this is the whole virus these various parts will be used as candidates in manufacturing the vaccine the vaccine what we are using in india covid shield is made with the spike protein as the vaccine candidate i will discuss this that when i come to the vaccine part because i was told there are people from the microbiology botany zoology uh, stream for the benefit of those people but i will make it very interesting for people from other uh, streams also so this is what i want i don't, don't want to explain this maybe for the benefit of our microbiology people what i want you to remember is the rna is a positive sense single stranded rna what does that means i think you are better experts than me in knowing what is the negative sense and positive sense when i come to the virus i want you to carefully look at the definition virus is an obligate intracellular parasite which depends on the host cell synthetic machinery for its survival and replication maybe this is not a open class the definition is too long it is an obligate intracellular parasite by telling that what do i mean it does not it does not have an extra cellular existence if i throw the virus into the atmosphere unless it comes in contact with another healthy individual it will not survive in the atmosphere for even minutes it will be killed and it uses host cell synthetic machinery for its survival and existence this is the definition of all viruses any any virus for that matter it cannot live like a bacteria that's it maybe most of us are living today because of that property itself now modes of spread who instead of confusing the common man with droplet infection fomite community transfer and all big big words they would have simply said the virus is airborne simple every everybody understands for the benefit, for, with due apologies to people from outside karnataka gaali alli haraduva kaile the virus spreads in air everybody will become careful we need not worry about the droplet and anything as a subject expert i was telling none of our masks are 100% meaningful they will not prevent the spread from happening at all use of mask is only a culture it is only a culture um we are following the other methods also very meticulously that's what we want to show so these are the methods what is a fomite fomite is a inanimate object maybe a phone something like this i wipe my face touch the phone deposit the virus you are elderly people you will touch the same phone pick it up onto your hand and unknowingly you will be transferring it to your respiratory tree that is a fomite fomite is an inanimate object acting as a vehicle for the transmission of the virus that's it now why this risk factors matter what are these risk factors now 10 of us may get infected with the virus but only some of us develop serious disease and only some of the people will succumb to the disease that is it now the risk factors like being overweight already suffering from a pre existing illness like diabetes hypertension 
heart disease, cancer, kidney failure, on a treatment which will suppress your immunity, such people have to be more careful. I will just rush through this because I just added these two slides yesterday because ours is post-COVID scenario. Our title is post-COVID scenario. We, we have to continue to take precautions when we go into our routine daily life and start attending our events, whether it is taking a class, going to a jatra, or getting into a cinema theater. That's it. So better understand how a pre-existing medical condition could make you more sick. Anticipate medical treatment that you might need if you get sick. It will not be COVID. Last week I was sick. If this topic were to be discussed last Friday, maybe I would have cancelled it. I was damn sick. I was not able to step out of the house. It was not COVID. It was some other bacterial uh, lung infection. Um, um, I never wanted to take chance spreading it to others. So I just kept myself at home. So by being careful, you will reduce your risk for severe COVID and you will take care of others also by not spreading it. Uh, I will discuss these risk factors from several perspectives. This is not a new disease, but it is only two years old. Now, if you ask me too many references, I don't have. In my medical forum also, I have seen this. Whatever I say, where is the reference? Bluntly, I have said, this is a new disease. From where do you get uh, this thing reference? I am doing a research. One day, I will give you some reference for the entire world. That's it. So, the risk factors are... Now, what is this risk factor? I cannot question you. I am just analyze. Risk factor is... Things which will increase the possibility of developing an issue. Like road traffic accident is an event. But why did the accident happen? Roads are not good. Traffic rules are not followed. My vehicle is not good. Other fellow is also not careful in driving. There is an unpredictable behavior of dogs and cattle on the road. So these are all the reasons why we end up with a accident. For developing a stroke or a heart problem, smoking, tension, that is stress, uncontrolled diabetes, hypertension, cholesterol. These are all the risk factors for developing a disease, heart disease or stroke. So similarly, for developing a severe nature of COVID, age, race and ethnicity, gender, some pre-existing medical conditions like obesity, heart and lung diseases, or their treatment, use of certain medications like steroid for asthma, for uh, transplant individuals, for cancer people, we use some antimetabolites and steroids, poverty and crowding. Uh, very unfortunate, even in this era, we have to tell that. But poverty, to some extent, it is in the minds. It is in the minds. I was born and brought up in the village. We were not born with silver spoon, but we were taught. We were taught how to be clean. I used to come from the school or from the playground or from my farm and shout for something to eat. My cook used to tell me, go, wash your hand with soap and water, come back and show me, I will give you. My parents never used to be there. I don't know whether you were playing with the ball or pulling the rope of a cattle. I don't know. I'm not going to give. See, that is where I started learning something about hygiene without even knowing the word hygiene. That's it. So it is all in the mind. With the available resources, we must try to be clean. So Swachh Bharat Abhiyan, if we had taken it very seriously and implemented it from the heart, it would have done wonders in preventing COVID to some extent. So crowding, because it is an airborne disease, uh, if there are three, four people in the house, if all of them are infected, or some of them are infected, the government advisory says each one should live in one room. What is that? Just yesterday, I was uh, releasing a video which was designed by uh, um, our ICMR, 
and National Academy of Science India, NASI, both of them. And one such video was designed by our Maharaj Mahajana's college students in local language, Canada. I will just attach it to uh, Professor Ranjan Swami. Uh, I will request him to share that with you. I wish it was done six months earlier, but anyway, um, there, if not COVID, with due to with the reference to some other diseases, it will be more meaningful. So how crowding and all really matters. Certain occupations, the worst is being working in a hospital, particularly the nursing staff. That is it. And pregnancy, last pregnancy. Pregnant ladies, 20,000 pregnant ladies have been vaccinated in US as an experimental thing. None of them have complained any simple thing. What does it say? Vaccine is very much safe even in pregnancy. So these are few take-home messages what you have to pick up in between. That's it. Now, natural course of the disease, let me finish it off in one slide. From the point of entry of virus into the body till recovery or death, virus follows a natural course. If Even if we don't interfere with vaccine, with the treatment and all that, it will follow a course. Most of the viral diseases are self-limiting in nature. They come, they stay, they damage, they go. Sometimes, unfortunately, they may take our life while going. That's it. Now, I want you to appreciate few words here. Incubation period. From the point of entry of virus into the body till the onset of the first symptom, that time duration is called incubation period. It is quite long, 2 to 14 days. And more than 90% of the people will end up having asymptomatic or mildly symptomatic disease, which goes unnoticed. Why I insist on this line is, even such people are capable of transmitting the disease producing virus to others. They are infective. They may not be suffering, but they are infective. Then some of them develop symptoms. Some of them develop uh, severe symptoms, going for ICU admissions, oxygen, non-invasive ox invasive oxygen, and even ventilator. And I've been discussing this with many of my doctor friends. Whoever has gone into Invasive ventilation has not come out successful. That's it. So up to non-invasive ventilation, it is okay. But non-invasive, um, HFNC, high frequency nasal cannula, where we will be delivering 50, 60 liters of oxygen per minute. In asthma patients, I use two to three liters of oxygen per minute. Um, but here, 50, 60 liters for weeks. That is why COVID treatment has become very, very expensive. You forget about other drugs, just oxygen itself will become very, very expensive. So some people develop respiratory distress and most of them recover and some of them will succumb to uh, some very few of them will succumb. Maybe two to three percent is the global mortality. So that is about the natural course of the disease. I have just picked up one diagram what was there on the net that uh, iceberg concept, tip of the iceberg concept, self-explanatory. I want you to observe this, that uh, affected but asymptomatic, but they continue to transmit infection to others. That's what I just wanted you to pick up from here. Symptoms, treatment, diagnosis, it, you're all familiar with. It is not out of the scope of we people to understand, but you're all familiar. Whether it is simple fever, body ache, cough, fatigue, loss of appetite, shortness of breath. See, even after one to two years of recovery, you know, people are coming to me with shortness of breath. It is all in the mind, psychological. What I have to do is reassure them. I have to just make a drama that I am examining them, subjecting them for some tests. And when once everything is normal, just speak to them for five minutes. Reassure them. We are there with you. Don't worry. That is enough. This can be done not only by a doctor, even by a social physician like you people. 
give them some time some listening because an unknown fellow will not be judgmental when he gives a eh, um time and is here to somebody he will not be judgmental let him tell something some unrelated unconnected things just give a patient listening he will be better this is something which is very much needed every one of us are depressed psychologically we may be having tons of money all facilities at home just a restriction for our social life itself two years is a very big period you know i have been very severely affected restricted movements restricted travel not able to see uh, children who are uh, not with me now whenever i want i used to rush and see them now one is doing his post graduation in medicine the other uh, the, my daughter is in final mbbs the very stress that i cannot see them whenever i want has caused depression in me and i can look at similar stories in many of our friends also so that is that's it so some people may develop influenza like illness or severe acute respiratory illness that is sari like uh, things you know we have ili wards sari wards incidentally um third wave number wise it was very high two weeks ago when i inquired with the diagnostic center a government aided facility the positivity percentage was 35 to 36 in my soul but yesterday when i inquired just for today's lecture sake i inquired it is somewhere between 2 to 3% so infection rate has come down hope it will continue to come down and help us get back to normal life uh, in early near future diagnosis look at this you know you have heard of rt pcr real time polymerase chain reaction reverse transcriptase polymerase chain reaction and rat a rapid antigen test i want you to pick up one line here we will be testing for the presence of rna related to covid virus whether it is live rna or dead rna we don't know some rt pcr results come with the cycle threshold levels two three days ago i i had an inquiry from one of our family friend who was supposed to go to dubai for renewing us visa indian renewing us visa in dubai a bit confusing don't worry <laughs> yes some of you have understood this but their cycle threshold is somewhere around 40 our cycle threshold our test here is somewhere around 30 so when they repeat it He is becoming positive there, so they are not allowing him to travel for the renewal of the visa. This type of confusion may continue for few more weeks. Be mentally prepared. But for patient management, we proceed with chest X-ray, CT scan. Even if the RT-PCR is negative, we look at CT scan report and we treat. Oxygen saturation. I think most of us have pulse oximeters at home, so we advise them. Even if you are symptomatic, if you, if your saturation is good. just keep away from others in the home and stay at home serology this shows presence of antibodies produced by my immune system specifically against covid virus so it shows footprint of the past infection igm il will show recent infection igg will reflect past infection i am doing a trial on my own on my body i am doing a trial i have tested presence of igg igm antibodies maybe eight times in the last one and a half years since the test became available uh maybe after i became positive i had never tested the antibodies before i became positive with infection itself i had a good positive igg antibodies which are protective in nature it is an evidence to show that i am protected unless the virus mutates and there is a vaccine escape like then i was vaccinated with one dose during the experimental stage in december 2020 we all took as experimental animals now instead of subjecting innocent people why not we only subject ourselves that that was the motto we had 
I will be 600 doctors took vaccine in Mysore city alone. That's it. Then came the second dose. Then came the booster dose. Okay, officially, we were all given third dose. And all elderly people we are giving. Uh, now this thing, if some of you are interested, you can contact me. I will be able to help you because I'm always, I am supplied with enough number of vaccines in my hospital. That's it. So that is about diagnosis, various types of diagnosis and the indication for each of these tests. Then comes to treatment. Don't worry. It is not in our domain at all, in today's domain. But going for an early care saves life. Early care. See, on 18th August 2020, one patient died in the ambulance in front of the hospital gate. A lady whom I had taken care for 20 years for her diabetes and other ailments. Why did she come to my hospital in the ambulance? There was no bed available in any other hospital. I was reassuring her with my PPE on. I was holding her hand. She died in my hand. 18th. 21st was our Gauri festival. Gauri Abba. One professor from our own university came into my hospital and died. 48 year old professor. I came to know through his wife a few months ago when she came for some certificate or something. He had symptoms three to four days earlier to his death. She told, sir, if we had come to you two, three days earlier, you would have saved us. I don't know. I don't know whether we were uh, really able to do so or what. But on 24th August, three days later, I became positive. We were six people in the hospital. Five of us became positive after attending to that patient. I don't know whether from there or from some other source. I became immediately positive. Other people became, uh, they took two, three days extra to become positive. That was the intensity of uh, the uh, spread at that point of time. Whenever you have symptoms, because there is an antibody cocktail available in government hospitals. Not free. It is for a cost. 40,000 rupees. That must be given within 24 to 72 hours of onset of symptoms. Then only it is effective. We people are not valuing the preventive medicines. We are looking, looking only at curative medicines. No. In COVID, it is not always possible. So approach for an early care. Have some trust in the medical stream. We are not sitting just to make money. Okay. Uh, it is, there, there may be some people. Exceptions were there even during Ramayana. Not just even, the, even in this era. So have some trust. Go to a doctor whom you know and listen to his advice completely. That's it. Whether it is oxygen, non-invasive ventilation, plasma therapy. My son was involved in this plasma therapy. He says it is very effective. He was having a discussion with me about monoclonal antibodies. When I say, when you say monoclonal antibodies are effective, plasma therapy was definitely effective. That's it. So antiviral treatment started with uh, hydroxychloroquine, what we exported to other countries, including US, and doxycycline, and remdesivir to the present molnupiravir. There are many things. And monoclonal antibodies. Um, Donald Trump took monoclonal antibodies. Otherwise, he would not have been fit to campaign during the elections. Once he became positive, he was rushed to the American Army Hospital and he was given a, a, a cocktail of monoclonal antibodies which made him recover fast. That's it. Now coming to immunity for the benefit of common man. Uh, I just designed it like this. We have something called innate immunity and acquired immunity. Innate immunity is something what we have by birth. Acquired immunity is something what we get after being born. It may be natural or artificial. Natural is we don't do anything. We get naturally immunized. Artificial, we do something. We take an injection or something, it drops. That is artificial. Now, there are two words with reference to both natural and artificial immunity. That is active and passive. Active means the individual's immune system will be put into action. Say, for example, 
I get exposed to COVID virus. That is a natural, natural infection. Virus not only caused the disease, it stimulated my immune system to produce antibodies, to st stimulate the T cells for cell mediated immunity, and that helped me to recover from the infection. Active. Passive is, take the example of measles disease and vaccine. You give BCG vaccine, oral polio vaccine, DPT vaccine in the first one to two months of a child's birth, a child's life. Whereas you give measles vaccine at the end of ninth month onwards. Why? We know the mother's previous measles experience will certainly have ready-made antibodies in her blood, which will transplacentally cross over to the fetal side, AGG antibodies, and will help the child from preventing himself or herself from developing a measles disease, even if by chance it gets exposed to the measles virus. I'm using the word passive here because the child's immune system is not playing any role. There were ready-made antibodies from the maternal circulation across the placenta, they reached the fetal circulation. And this is natural. A baby being growing in the mother's womb is natural. We didn't do anything. I will just, excuse me for a minute, I will just get some water. I forgot to get water. Sorry. Now coming to artificial immunity, I said we do something. That is, we inject something artificial. When an individual is exposed to the wild organism in the society, it is natural. When we pack it into a vaccine and give it as an injection, it is artificial. Whereas this vaccine will also go and stimulate the immune system. So it is active. Active artificial immunity. It is stimulating the immune system. Then what is this passive artificial immunity? Imagine somebody being gravely bitten by a rabid dog. There is no time for giving antirabic vaccine, stimulate the man's immune system to produce antirabies antibodies. In such a grave condition, what we do, we have ready-made antibodies by hyper-immunizing horses. We prepare ready-made antibodies against the rabies virus. We inject it at the site of the bite, 50%, and systematically 50%, which will neutralize the rabies virus immediately. And we will follow it up with a full-pledged anti-rabic vaccine, which will induce active immunity. So, I just, I think I made it slightly simple for even a non-medical person to understand various types of immunity because by disease, we are getting natural active immunity. By vaccine, we are getting uh, active artificial immunity. By monoclonal antibodies, we are getting passive artificial immunity. All three things yeah. come into play in our COVID vaccination program. Now coming to the preventive aspects. You design your own method. The outcome should be implementable by every individual. That is my request. Whatever you say, you do a um, drama or something, a role play, a street play, convince people about this hygiene. Very important. General measures. There is nothing big in general measures, you know. This is it. This is it. You know what? In 2009, when we had this H1N1 pandemic, the same academic staff college organized 
not less than 20 programs starting from primary school to a medical school by me. This slide was created by me at that time. I'm, maybe I just cut and paste some pictures from here and there, typed something. That's it. This is what goes a long way in preventing a rare born disease. Only thing is, I what I want to explain is here, when you have a respiratory symptom, don't get into the crowd. Don't go to the school at all. Keep away from the crowd. Spread it to somebody. They in turn will spread it to somebody that the chain will be broken in the beginning itself. About washing hands, it is not just a few second thing what we have to do. Whatever soap it may be, you have to spend at least 20-30 seconds scrubbing all parts of the thing. What we do before starting an operation on a patient, we take not less than about 8 to 10 minutes scrubbing our hands. You have, it will be burning. That's it. So these two points I wanted you to carry. Now coming to vaccines and vaccination status of our country. I gave a talk to the UK group. Two talks I gave. One is Indian perspective of vaccines. That was much before we started our vaccination. At this point of time in this vaccine, with due apologies, because you are teachers, you are the really policy, policy makers, not the politicians or the bureaucrats. You people train them to go to the job. So in my view, you are the really real policy makers. 